Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and this is a what's on my iPhone video. You guys have been pretty relentless in asking me to make one of these videos. And one of the reasons I don't is because I don't have that much new, but I've made a few changes to my wallpaper, things like that. So let's take a look at that first and we'll turn on the iPhone. Now I'll turn it on this way so I don't unlock it. So you can see this is a wallpaper I got off an app, which I'll see if I still have it on the phone. I'm not sure that I kept the app. It's one of those apps where you can create a custom lock screen, and I thought this was a great image from it. So we'll unlock it, and you can see the background is looks like a road looking into the distance. It's kind of blurry, and it really looks nice contrast from top to bottom. So you can see if you've been following me that this screen has not changed all that much. One thing to note that definitely has changed is I have Google Maps on my home screen. It's not that big of a deal to some, but it is to others. And I used to have, up, up until maybe a week ago or so, I used to have the regular Maps app here, and then I'd have Google Maps on this page in a folder. Now you can see that I, I actually only have two pages and that's because I like it simple and clean. And this stuff really hasn't changed too much if you've been following me all along. So we've got remote and SoundCloud that I use regularly, the App Store, Instagram, Pulse, Day One Journal, and YouTube. The most used apps on here for me are probably YouTube, Google Maps, Remote, and SoundCloud, and Instagram and Twitter. Probably everything from here down, This, these three rows down, and then the other stuff randomly. But that's probably not what you're caring too much about. You want to see what's on the next page. And one of those things is Magneto. Magneto is a really interesting app that is in beta right now, I, be I believe still. It's a calendar app and you have to be invited. You can see it's private beta. I have nothing scheduled for tomorrow and I can't really show you everything in here uh, as far as what my schedule has on it. But you can see we've got a today and to-do list and map alerts and we can schedule something new. And that's where this is, gets really interesting. This kind of takes the concept of Google Now, if you've used that, where it kind of knows what you're doing based on your calendar and some mail preferences and kind of inserts them into your calendar and tells you when you need to leave to get to places on time. You can tag things. You can do all sorts of really neat things with it. And it's definitely a really great app when it comes out. And I really think it's a uh, a really helpful calendar app that looks much nicer and cleaner than you get with the stock iPhone app. They've made some improvements to that iCal app, but it's really not that great, or calendar app, whatever it's called now. But right now, you can see it's showing the weather and a little bit of a forecast, high and low, and that's about it. There's alerts and map and to-do, and it gives you a little bit of information about it. And I highly advise you to check it out. You can see all of that on their website. And you can sign up for an invite, and maybe if you're that interested, let me know, and I can send you an invite, possibly, if it's something you'd really like to try out. But please send me an invite only if you really think you're going to use it. Uh, I'd hate to go to someone that's not going to use it. So you can see I've moved Maps to the second page. I could probably put it in Utilities at this point, but I've moved it there. Amazon is something I use a lot. I've been looking for a home, so I use Trulia, so anyone that's used that. Uh, Trulia is a really great way to find a house. It's got some great recommendations uh, depending on where you're looking. You can go all over the United States, find what's in your area. So I guess we'll go over to, uh, this is, I'm in the Pittsburgh area, but this is Charlotte, North Carolina. And based on some criteria you've set, I didn't really set anything. Maybe I set it to I'm not really sure what I set it to, but as you can see right there, it's making suggestions in a certain bracket. Let me see what I set this to just for now. So I set it to 0 to 150,000 just to see what was out there. Three bedrooms plus, pretty simple. And that's pretty much it. You hit apply and it will keep it constrained to that. Now you could zoom way out and get more. You can zoom way in. And when you want, you think maybe you want something there, you can tap on that, tap on the next. And then you can browse pictures. It gives you all sorts of information. It's a free app, so check it out if you're looking for a house. It's really pretty nice, and it's letting me know I have maybe some new search criteria that popped up. OneNote is a great new note-taking app, or I really shouldn't say it's new. It's been around quite some time, and it's from Microsoft. And you won't find many Microsoft things on my iPhone, but you will see this here. So we've got Quick Notes. This is Notebook Not Ready. Oh, tap here to add a note. 
So it says it's not ready. I actually haven't opened it on my iPhone since I reinstalled it. I use it on my iPad regularly. And I do use the Note app for iPhone, but this one's got a little bit more features to it. And unfortunately, it's not ready. But it syncs the account just like the regular note-taking app. I'm always trying a new note-taking app as well. And if this was ready, basically you can just take a note and make more tabs and all sorts of different ways of sorting it. It's really not anything uh, fantastic really on the iPhone, but on a computer, on a Mac, on a Windows computer, or even on an iPad. It's actually pretty nice, so definitely check it out. That's another free app. You can see I have Hangouts, and I've chatted with a couple people that follow me regularly on YouTube uh, via that, and it's, it's a pretty nice app. It works really well, and it's a great chat application. That's another free application, so I would urge you to check that out if you're not familiar with that. You do need a Gmail account or something along those lines in order to chat with someone, and you will need to know somebody that's also using it. I also have LinkedIn. LinkedIn is an app that probably most of you know if you're looking for a job or want to connect with people at a job. And it's a really simple app, but we're going to go into my folders in more detail. So that's just something, these are something to check out. And what tends to happen on my phone is these will stay pretty much the same and then these will gradually fill in with apps I like and then I'll delete them and start over again. I don't normally have three pages. I just haven't since the iPhone 1. Once in a while I will, but that's pretty much it. So in the main folder for news, this hasn't changed if you watched the last video, but you can see Facebook. I'm not going to go into these because, well, I'll show you weather if you haven't seen the new version yet. But Facebook and Capture for YouTube and Twit, if I follow a lot of podcasts on the Twit network, really great stuff. Twit.tv, then Flipboard, oh, and The Verge and Google Plus, which Google is kind of maybe getting rid of. I'm not really sure at this point. So that definitely could be a concern for some of you that use that. And then the Weather Channel. The Weather Channel is really pretty good now. They've made some pretty nice changes. You can see here is the weather. It's got this nice kind of layered look with translucent weather. Why it's taking so long to get it, I don't know. But you can see this is hourly, what the temperature should be. 10 day forecast really nice with a little bit of if you tap on it, it gives you a little synopsis of what it's supposed to be like here is the general area here's some video about it and so on so they've really updated this quite a bit and you can see pollen pollen's pretty high right now and uh, that's affecting me and a lot of other people i know so that's the weather app most of these apps are free. Now, the, the apps that I have that are paid are generally under my games folder, and I do have two pages under here. And you can see there's Game Center, Jetpack Joyride, Game Dev Story, phenomenal game uh, that I've played over and over. These tend to be the games I'll play regularly, but out of these that I play regularly all the time, if I'm actually playing a game on my iPhone, which is rare, I'll usually play them on an iPad, is Ticket to Ride Pocket. Jetpack Joyride, Game Dev Story, and Field Runners 2. Those four right there, uh, probably more like three, Ticket to Ride, Field Runners 2, and Game Dev Story are more what I would uh, play regularly. The others are just kind of standby. I don't even play Minecraft. Actually, my kids play Minecraft, even though I think it's, it's okay. I just don't really play it. I have PlayStation for the PS4, and I thought I had the Xbox One uh, app on here, but I guess I don't. Monument, if you haven't seen this game, is definitely worth checking out. This is probably one of the better games to come out, and it has some great music. It's a simple puzzle game. Well, I guess it's not necessarily simple. It depends on how good you are at these sort of things. And let's go into it. It's real simple in the sense that you have to get this person here, kind of up here. And you can see tap the path to move the person. And the idea is you can change perspective. So you see what happened there is it didn't really look like that should have worked. We've got a little square. We move it. The perspective changes, and I can get up there. So there's, a, I think, 10 levels or so in the first time you buy this. They're really good, and they get progressively a little bit harder as you go on. And it's definitely a, wor a game worth checking out. It does cost a little bit. I think it's around $5, if I remember right. And it only took me one or two hours to beat, if I remember right. But it was a great experience and definitely worth playing through. Under finance apps, you can see I have a, a couple different things here, just different banks. 
Uh, Square Register, really good stuff. MoneyWiz, I've talked about over and over. I use it regularly. Definitely check that out. Under my Apple apps, that's just Apple apps. Nothing really exciting there. Just kind of standard things with the addition of iTunes U and Find Friends. In the Apple Store, but kind of things, again, all free. Under Utilities, we have Red Laser. I use it all the time. I have Geekbench for when I do benchmark videos. I also have My Glass for Google Glasses, which I hardly ever use, actually. Google Authenticator. Got to have that two-step authentication for Google. And Sheets, that's a local gas station. So unless you have those in your area, that probably wouldn't relate. Starbucks, Redbox, these are things I'll, I'll use fairly often, but they're kind of in this utility thing. I don't know why I have Xfinity, since I don't think I have it. And then we have a couple other things that are really helpful. Baby monitor is great if you have little ones. You can use uh, maybe an iPad or something you're not using at the time to monitor your kids with. Instead of buying one of those expensive video monitors, you can use one of these. And 3D Mark. You can see all of these things. And I've gone over these before if you've followed me. So I don't want to go over every single one. Uh, we've got Planning Center Online. Use that for some stuff I do uh, at a local church. Help out with, kind of let you know what you're scheduled to do. And sign easy. Now, I, it's a signing app I haven't really used. I installed it and haven't tried it out. So let's take a quick look at it. And we'll try it. So it's just a, the idea is to sign a sample document. So let's see, signature. You can see it's, it, it's pretty responsive. So I guess we can put our signature on documents. Uh, I think that was free. I don't know if it still is, but I thought it was maybe a deal or something. But that was a great app. Now, under audio and video, I have some things that sometimes I use a lot. I like Audible if I listen to an audiobook, great app. Disney movies, I was sort of forced to install so that I could get my Disney movies that I have that we buy. Uh, you'll see right here my collection. That's fine. So you can see start your collection. I, I have these. I don't know why it's signing me out, but I think you get the idea there. It's just your Disney movies. It's a free app. Uh, Play Memories. I'm using a Sony NEX5R actually to record this, and I've used that for some time. And I'll leave a link to some gear that we actually use here uh, to re record everything, and I'll leave that in the link below. But uh, that's one of the things I can control that camera with. It's really nice. Xfinity to go. Uh, it's for Comcast to have, I do have Xfinity. I was thinking it was Fios for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but I do have Xfinity where I am. So uh, that's to get some things on the go if I want to watch them on my phone. B&H Photo, fantastic store looking for photo gear or tripods or camcorders or whatever. This is where you can buy that stuff. Uh, store in New York City, really great stuff. They'll ship it to you. I installed Lightly. It's a photo app. It's free, so go check it out. Um, looks really nice. Let you put some filters on, but they're not bad filters. They're not like, well, I guess Instagram filters I'm not crazy about. Then watch ABC. Most of those things in here I very rarely use, so I, I didn't even know what was in there, to be honest. Under production, the final folder here, you can see I have pages, iMovie, iPhoto, numbers, and Keynote. Now, I'll be doing some other videos on how to use some of these features because a lot of you have asked me in particular how to use iMovie on here, on iPad, even on Mac. As I've used iMovie in the past, uh, I'm pretty familiar with it. I actually use Final Cut Pro regularly now, but I'm really familiar with iMovie. And so I'll be doing some of those videos in the future. So I'm not going to go into each one of these. This has been kind of a long video, and I've covered a lot of these before. But since I don't have that many apps anymore, uh, I'd love to hear from you what apps you think maybe fall into the same type of things you see I have here, but that I might like, that you think are really great must-have apps. I'd love to hear what your top 10 must-have apps are. And if you suggested it, you know, maybe we'll do a video and mention that you suggested that one. Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.